Morning, how we doing? Man, you guys are fired up today, all right? I like that. How we doing? Yeah, come on, let's, let's go. Yeah, welcome. Hey, let's welcome all those guys and gals that are joining us online. There's about 100 plus every week or so. Can we welcome them as we join us? Yeah. I'd love for them to clap back to you, but I don't know how that works. But anyways, man, we are, as Amante said, in week, the final week, I don't even know what week number it is anymore, of the I Am series. Uh, We've studied the seven I Am statements that you find in the book of John. And uh, man, we've had 21 days of prayer in that. We've had a ton of baptisms in that. We've had people give their life to Jesus in the midst of this series. So we've had a lot happen over the last uh, seven or eight weeks. And God continues to show up and do amazing things in in our midst. And man, I think it's because we pray and we pray first and we seek out the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit to do what only he can do because none of us could do it on our own. Amen. And uh, man, I believe those seven statements actually kind of give the the seven purpose statements uh, for Jesus uh, while he was with us here on this earth. And as he ministered, those were kind of what he came to do and and how he lived that out. And I want to finish up this series by going backwards to John chapter 14, 15, and 16. And I want us to look at some prayers and, and look at this incredible conversation that's really happening with Jesus and his disciples. And, and out of that, he's, he's clearly dealing with what it is going to be that kind of fuels them, what, what's going to help them continue to live out and be who he was calling them to be because he was pretty clear with them that he was leaving, all right? He was out. But here's the deal today. God wants more than anything for you and for me to, to not only understand the purposes, but actually have an encounter with these seven I am statements. And hopefully over the past few weeks, you've done that. And so I want to jump into these three chapters of the book of John and really kind of challenge you to five different prayers that I pray pretty much every single day uh, when I sit down in the morning to do my devotions, and I, I want you to, to grab hold of them. But before we get there, I want to I explain something to you, because when we start talking about the Holy Spirit, and, and somebody came to me the other day and they said, well, you're, you're one of them Pentecostals. I don't even know what that meant. I mean, it's mean like I'm touched down Jesus when I worship. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And some of us could get a little more active in our worship. It would burn some calories. Just saying. All right. I mean, I need to be more active in my worship. So, but, but here's the deal. I want us to, to understand that the power that I'm talking about became readily available to you and to me and to the entire world on this day that we know as the day of Pentecost. And so when, when we hear the word Pentecost, we get the, well, you're Pentecostal. Or, so, so let me just do some very quick teaching on Pentecost. Pentecost is very simply a Jewish holiday, all right? That's all it was. It was a Jewish holiday that they celebrated in remembering that this moment in time when Moses went up on Mount Sinai and he picked up the tablets, a.k.a. the Ten Commandments. You guys know about that, right? If you didn't, I'm glad. This is free, all right? This is an Old Testament survey portion of our course, all right? And so so Moses goes up, gets the tablets, and in that moment in time, here's the important part that you got to grab hold of, is that, that God took his law, literally took his finger, and etched the law of God on these stone tablets. So remember that. In the Old Testament, he etched the law on what? On tablets, on stone tablets. But on the day of Pentecost, something else happens. So I want us to grab hold of this whole idea of Pentecost. So Acts chapter 2, verse 1, very simple. It says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. The word Pentecost actually simply means 50. It's 50 days after Easter. Has nothing to do with a religion. It has nothing to do with a denomination. It has nothing to do with your style or lack thereof style in worship, all right? It has nothing to do with your ability to have certain spiritual gifts. It is ever, it's simply a day. 
I love the way Robert Morris says it. He says, the coming of the Holy Spirit marks a sharp line, though, on the timeline of history. What we must understand, this doesn't, it just, just wasn't any other day, though. That on that day, 50 days after Jesus had, 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 had burst forth out of the grave, he literally has this moment in time. He's already ascended into heaven, all right? And he's, he's, something that he's promised happens. And what literally happens right here is, is there's this moment where, where the Spirit of God becomes readily available for the entire world. It's no longer this Old Testament concept. It is, he is now alive and well. But here's the deal. When we think back, I want us to see and look at the two different days. Old Testament Pentecost. Moses goes up to Mount Sinai. What came down on the mountain? Anybody remember? A what? I can't hear. A what? No, not a wall. No, no, help me out here. Man, I... A cloud, thank you. A cloud descended on the mountain. Now fast forward a few thousand years to the New Testament day of Pentecost. What happens? There's a, it, what, what falls on the people? A fire. It's fire and, and, and there were loud noises and earthquakes and the whole, the earth is shaking and trembling. I mean, the whole deal is going down. And this fire falls down in that moment in time. Here's the difference in the two days. In the Old Testament, the law of God was written on something external, a stone tablet. In the New Testament, God writes his law on the hearts of man, which is internal. Because God knew he, he didn't need people who could just keep external law anymore. He needed somebody that would actually say, I need my heart changed. Amen. And here's the deal. We, we've tried the external law thing, and it doesn't work for most of us because we fail over and over. Can I get a witness with me? All right? Am I the only one testifying failing at the law? All right? But the deal is this. It is very simple. God wanted to see changed hearts. It was no longer about a bunch of rules and regulations anymore. So what blows my mind is, is how in the world are they, are they so confused and how, how are you and I so confused and to be honest, so resistant of the Holy Spirit when we have conversations. It's like, it's about ready to get crazy all up in here. Somebody thought that already. He's going to pull out a snake. He's going to, he's going to go running on top of the seats. That would be amazing, but I'd break my back. All right. It's going to get all, you know? We're no different, though, than the people of the New Testament in Acts chapter 2. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 12. These would have been the disciples. They would have been here. They would have been with Jesus in the upper room, right? And look what they are. They're amazed and they ask one another, what does all this mean? Hear me on this. We can tap into every I am statement and the purpose of it and do everything we can to live it out. I mean, and still end up short and powerless. Because here's the deal. We can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. It is our fuel. It is our power source. Without God changing our hearts. Here, let me just say this. You can, you can create every law known to man. You can come up with a bazillion laws. I mean, I'm talking to a public school teacher there. It doesn't matter if it's public school or private school. I'm talking to a school teacher the other day. And they're like, these kids are crazy. I'm like, they are crazy. And you want to know why? Because they need their hearts changed. They're like, we keep putting more rules and rules and rules and rules and law and law and law. And I'm here to tell you, it's not going to work. We got to have people's hearts changed. And your heart has to be changed. And my heart has to be changed. We think we can reform our way to something. And I'm here to tell you today, you can't reform your way to it. You can't live up to it. You've got to have your heart changed. And that comes by an encounter with the Holy Spirit. He's the one who can change your heart. I mean, we think, well, we'll just do social justice. We'll just do social justice, social justice, social justice. And I'm all about social justice. But hear me on this. Social justice without spiritual justice is no justice at all. All right? So we got to have changed hearts in this world. That's why I want to end our series on looking at these five prayers that I pray, five prayers that I've interacted with that have changed my life, and literally inviting you to invite with me the Holy Spirit into your life as an individual, not as a corporate body of the church. 
Now, these are dangerous prayers when you pray them. Let me just take you to the upper room. I mean, this is an important conversation that's happening in the upper room. Jesus is one day away before he's about ready to go to the cross. That's how important it is. Don't you think if he knows he's going to die, and he knows he's going to die, he knows everything. Shocker, right? Sorry to end the story for you. And so he's in the upper room. He knows what's waiting him, and he's going to have a conversation. If you knew you had 24 hours to live with your disciples or with your people, don't you think you would make sure you shared the most important things? Hello? Like, here's my passwords. Here's the bank account. That's what some of us would be sharing. You know what I'm saying? Here's where it's all hidden. Here's the life insurance policy. Hello? And so Jesus does what? He gets in the upper room. He's got his disciples there. He's hanging out. He, he goes over the Lord's, he, they celebrate the Lord's supper together. They, he, then he washes their feet in John 13. And then he has this conversation that he makes sure to tell them, hey, I'm about to leave you, but I'm about to send somebody to you. What says in John 14? He says, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another what? A comforter. Five times we see Jesus declare this to them. Sometimes when we see the word comforter, we also, comforter, we also see the word helper. It's referring to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send you a comforter or a helper that he may abide. Where is he going to, where is he going to abide with you at and how long? Forever. Forever. So five prayers. Are you ready? First, first, I, mean, I mean, first prayer is this. And I think I'm out of order somehow, but here we go. No, here's the one. It says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will do what? He will teach you all the things. Amen. Awfully, you need to say, and, and I'm completely out of whack up here. I don't know how. Holy Spirit, comfort me. There we go. That's the first prayer. Holy Spirit, comfort me. Say, hey, you know, here's the deal. I, I, I'm not shocked. Can we be honest about something today? We live in a broken world. We live in a world that needs healed. Our country needs healing. Our city needs healing. Our church needs healing. Our homes need healing. There's marriages in here that need healing. You're in relationships that need healing. Your finances need healing. You need healed emotionally. Can we admit that we live in a broken time and that there are moments in time where we need the Spirit of God to show up and comfort us? Your heart is broken. Can I tell you today, if you come here and your heart is broken, the Holy Spirit wants more than anything to comfort you. He wants to mend your broken heart. Look what he says in verse 27. He says, peace, what? Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Ask the Holy Spirit today to come and comfort you. Somebody today, you just need to simply go to him and say, would you comfort me today? I'm here and I'm in turmoil, but I need your comfort today, Holy Spirit. I'm in pain, I'm struggling, I'm suffering. I need to be comforted. It's a very simple prayer. I pray, I pray it often. When my heart is broken, when I'm hurting, when I'm struggling, when I'm suffering, when, when I look at the world we live in and I'm like, oh, this is rough, I simply say, Holy Spirit, would you comfort me today? Oh, it's easy to sing the songs. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Oh, those are good songs, right? Or he's greater than all the things in the world. But can I tell you today, he truly is. It's just not a song. So, but you got to pray. You got to ask the Holy Spirit for it. You got to ask him to comfort you. Then he goes on, and I just read this to you. It says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name will do what? It will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said. You just simply, the second prayer is this, Holy Spirit, would you reveal truth to me? Remember, we're just praying simple prayers. There are five simple prayers. Holy Spirit, comfort me. Holy Spirit, reveal truth to me. And, may, and I, I know for me, this, is, this has been my prayer over the past few months, it, it really since July, was, Holy Spirit, would you give me divine revelation and divine wisdom that only comes from you, that I know exactly what I'm supposed to do because this is your truth. And now somebody might say, well, Matthew, you're supposed to get that because you're the pastor. You know, no. 
you're the pastor, and you change your voice in order to get us to do things. You know what I'm saying? Oh, God. You know, it's like, whatever. Yeah, I'm the reverend. Thank you. I'd really like to be called a bishop, though. <laughs> we don't really have that in our world uh, that I live in, but like, I just think that'd be a cool name. Give me a robe. Then I wouldn't look so heavy. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you, you're supposed to have truth revealed to you so you can bring it to us. Can I tell you today? It's not how it works. It's not how it works. And you're like, well, well how, tell me then, tell me. I, 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 I hear you, you're saying, tell us, Matthew. Oh, tell us, so great bishop, what, what it is. What is it that, 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 then how can we know? Let me just get very simple with you. If you're not having the truth of God revealed to you, then you're probably not in his word. He's revealing his truth to you through his word. And you got to get in his word to find the truth. So when you pray, Holy Spirit, reveal truth to me, don't expect him to just write it on a wall. He might audibly tell you every once in a while, but I'm pretty confident that most of the time in order to have it revealed to you, you got to open up God's word. And let me, I'm going to talk about this in the coming weeks. We're getting ready to go into our vision series called God Has More For You. It's starting next week. Can't wait. It's going to be great. We're going to celebrate 15 years of, of existence. And a, and a few weeks after that, it's going to rock. You don't want to miss it. All the things that they say. But the reality is, can I tell you, I've told you this a hundred times, and I'll tell you a hundred more times or a thousand times. Every morning, I wake up and I read the, anybody remember? Does anybody remember what I read every morning? The what Bible? The one-year Bible, all right? I've told you a hundred times, if you don't have a one-year Bible, uh, get on an app, or if you want one in physical form, tell us, and if you can't afford it, we'll buy it for you, all right? 100%, we'll order them this week. We don't have any right now, okay? I messed that up last hour, but we will make sure you get one, because we want God's word in people's hands. And I think, just to be honest with you, it's better to read it in paper than it is to read it on your phone biblia, all right? Like, I think the phone is great, but I love to, to, to write in my Bible, and so we'll buy you a one-year Bible. And every morning I wake up and I read the New Testament. I read the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, uh, the Psalms and the Proverbs. And as I'm reading them, before I ever get there, my prayer is very simply, Holy Spirit, would you reveal some truth to me today? And it doesn't go without fail. Now, it's tough when you're in Lamentations, not going to lie, all right, to find some truth. Thank God for the New Testament, all right? But he reveals it to me. And then, here's the truth, Matthew. Here it is. Now, now what are you going to do with it? And if you go to my journal, you would see that I'm writing down, God, you revealed this truth to me. God, you revealed this to me. Because I ask him, he actually does it. But I've got part of it that I have to do too. See, we firmly believe that this book that I hold in my hand is the inerrant word of God. Do you believe that with me? See, here's what I believe, that, that somebody said, well, how does that work? I'm like, well, man held the pen, but the Spirit of God was the, the one inspiring them to write what they wrote. Right. Hebrews 4.12 talks to us about the Word of God. It says, for the Word of God is what? It's alive and powerful. powerful. We like that part, right? Like, because we like power, but it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. We're a fan of that too, right? We want a dagger that stabs, right? Cutting between soul and spirit. Now we're starting to question, like, I don't know if I like this part of the word of God. Between joint and marrow, it does what? It, our innermost thoughts and desires. Time out. Oh, I'm out now. Oh, Holy Spirit, reveal the truth to me, but nothing that's going to expose a part of my life that I don't want to have exposed to me. Because here's the deal. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable, ultimately. It's revealing, it's powerful, it's alive, it's sharp. And you know what the word of God does? It cuts out the things in my life when I pray, Holy Spirit, reveal to me. It cuts that stuff out. Or it shows me what needs to be cut out. I have to allow him to cut it. Somebody today, you need to pray, Holy Spirit, reveal your truth to me. And he's going to show you some things in your life that need to be cut out. John 15, 26 says, says, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will do what? Third prayer I pray is, Holy Spirit, use me. Amazing, he will give you the words to say to other people on his behalf. I pray, Holy Spirit, here's the exact prayer. I, I, you're like, man, you're really creative in your devotions. I'm not, I'm... Very boring, to be honest with you. 
It's very systematic to me because it works for me. You have to find what works for you. I mean, it's so systematic that I have the same music that plays. I sit in the same chair. I drink out of the same coffee cup. I read out of the same Bible. I write in the same journal at the same time every day. And I pray the same prayers. Holy Spirit, use me. Why? Because today I want to be your mouthpiece. Would you make me your mouthpiece? Today, Holy Spirit, would you make me your hands and your feet? Holy Spirit, would you help me bring a little bit of heaven to earth today? Amen. Amen. It's just a prayer. It's a very simple prayer. Hear me on this today. I want you to hear this from your pastor. I, I don't care if you're a believer here today. I don't care if you've been a member of the River Church since the, or an owner, we don't call them members, owner of the River Church since the day it began in our living room. I don't care if you're a seeker. I don't care if you're a skeptic. I don't care if you're an atheist. I don't care if you're a homosexual. I don't care who you are today. I want you to hear me today. You are loved by me. You know why? Because I pray every day, Holy Spirit, would you use me? It doesn't mean that I won't speak truth to you. Oh, I've had people say, oh, well, you think your God's and your life is better than my life. No, my life isn't better than your life, but my God is better than your God. You're a big deal to me because you're an even bigger deal to God and the Holy Spirit. I don't care if you're red or yellow, black or white, I love you and so does God. Amen. So does God. Doesn't mean that we won't challenge you. Doesn't mean that I won't push you. Because that's what it says in Acts 1-8 when he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my what? You'll be my witnesses. See, see, here's the deal. You don't receive the power of God. You don't receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit for very simply put to have fun. The Spirit of God showing up in your life and showing up in my life isn't so we can have fun. He shows up because there's a function for us to serve. There's, there's a purpose for us to live out. We just don't have us the, the, the stuff on the walls and everything we send out that we want you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We firmly believe that's what it's all about. We're going to talk about that more in the coming weeks. We didn't receive power just to have fun. What you receive power for is so when darkness comes, you get to flip the light switch when you enter in the room, and you get to be the light in the midst of darkness. Where you, would you be willing to pray, Holy Spirit, use me. John 16, 8 says, when he comes, he will convict. He will what? This is the part, ah, it's like, why? Why do you have to do that for? The world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. Fourth prayer I pray is, Holy Spirit, as I open your word today, would you convict me? It's a dangerous prayer. It's a dangerous part of the prayer. You're asking the Holy Spirit to point out in your life, in that moment, and can, can I help you with something? Sometimes the Holy Spirit will use other people around you. In my life, he uses my wife, just to be honest. Yeah, that, you missed that one. Yeah, that, that was, you were an idiot. And Jesus still loves you. And I get to do the same back. Can I tell you today, you pray, Holy Spirit, would you convict me? Psalms 139 says, puts it this way, verse 23. Search me, God, and know my heart. I pray this often. God, would you test me and know my anxious thoughts? See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me, God, in the way of everlasting. What I love about our God is that he is not a condemning God, but he is a convicting God. He's not gonna condemn me, oh, but he's gonna convict me. He shows me where I need to change when I pray this prayer, and he'll do the same for you, but it's dangerous to pray it. John 16, 13 puts it this way. He said, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will do what? 
Uh, when he convicts you, he'll guide you. This is good news into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. You know what, man? Here's the deal. I love the fact that we, have, that we can pray, Holy Spirit, guide me. Show me. Guide me towards truth. The scriptures are crystal clear what's yet to come. We don't have to live without hope. We don't have to live anxiously. We don't have to question, well, I wonder what's coming. I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what's going to happen. Can I tell you, when you open God's word, he tells you what's yet to come. I've read the back of the book, my friend, and we win. This isn't a gamble. We win. Holy Spirit, would you guide me? Isaiah 30, verse 21 says, Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Would you pray today, Holy Spirit, guide me? Maybe you're here today and you need to say, Holy Spirit, comfort me. You're here today and you're hurting. And you need the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're here today and you need to say, Holy Spirit, would you reveal your truth to me? Would you, would you reveal more of, of your divine wisdom to me? Holy Spirit, would you use me? Would you make me your hands and your feet? Holy Spirit, would you convict me? Would you convict me today? Would you show me what in my life I need to repent of? Would you show me where I am not in line with your word? And finally, Holy Spirit, would you guide me? And when he speaks, would you listen? And would you walk in it? When he speaks to you, will you actually do what he says to do? finish up this morning in this series these seven I am statements are some of the most powerful statements in all of scripture but they just weren't meant to be great statements so we can make cool pictures and logos for them they were meant for us to interact with and to live out and to experience and today you can still experience them through the Holy Spirit but you've got to ask him to help you every head bowed, every eye closed in the room. If you're interacting online, we'd ask for you to share right there in the room. But would you say today, Matthew, I, I need to pray portions of that prayer. And would you say today, my, the portion I'm, I'm going to pray is, Holy Spirit, comfort me. I, I'm here and I'm, I'm hurting and I'm broken and I need healing heart needs mending and you need to pray today to the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit would you comfort me today if that's you I want you to slip your hand up I'm going to pray with you anybody else like the Holy Spirit comfort me and you're asking him right now right there just right now as you have your hand raised just ask him Holy Spirit comfort me right now you can put them down maybe you're here today and you'd say Say, Matthew, I need the truth revealed to me I, I need divine wisdom I, I, need to, I need to experience the, the divine wisdom that only comes from God. And you'd say, Holy Spirit, reveal your truth to me. You need, you need his truth to be revealed to you today. And you're, you're, you're praying that right now. So what you slip your hand up. Anybody like that? Holy Spirit, I, I need you to reveal your truth. Yeah, just keep them up. Anybody else? Holy Spirit, reveal your truth to me. Make it clear. You put them down. Maybe you're here today and you need to pray. You know for a fact that you haven't been the mouthpiece for God, that, that you haven't been interacting, you haven't been living out the, the idea of making a difference and living out your purpose. You need today, you're praying, Holy Spirit, would you use me this week? Would you use me today? Anybody else like that? Just slip your hand up. You need to pray, Holy Spirit, use me. Use me, yeah. Use me. Maybe today you know that you need the Holy Spirit to convict you. You've gotten used to the life that you're living. You already know that there's, he's not condemning you. He's just convicting you, showing you what needs to be cut out. And you'd say, Holy Spirit, you'd pray it right now. Holy Spirit, convict me. 
Anybody else like that? Slip your hand up right here. I'm praying with you. Holy Spirit, convict me. Show me anything. Search me, oh God. Search me today. Finally, you need to pray, Holy Spirit, guide me. Who's praying, Holy Spirit, guide me today? Guide me in the path of righteousness. Father, you've seen every hand that was raised. And today we believe that there's no other name on this, in this world that's ever been and, or ever will be. There's no other name upon which we can call except yours. So Holy Spirit, as we call on you now, as we communicate with you now, right there in our seats, Holy Spirit, would you do what only you can do? Would you speak in ways that only you can speak? Would you convict us? Would you reveal to us? Would you guide us right now? Right now. As we worship you right now, would you do that, God? Would you do this right now? Because there's no other name. It's right there in your seat. I want you to pray. To my left and to my right are crosses. There's stations around it. If you you want to write down what you're praying and you want to put that on the cross. God, I need to be used by you. God, I need to be convicted by you. I need to you to guide me today. God, I need your comfort. I need your healing today. I need your truth and your wisdom. As we worship together, you can move to those stations and move to the crosses. Spend time with God today. Let's worship him.